Welcome to Fun with Annuities, where every single week I welcome a celebrity guest expert that can help you maximize chapter two of your life. Listen, learn, laugh, and love every minute of the most unique financial podcast on the planet. Let's get to it. Welcome to Fun with Annuities. I'm your host, Stan, the Annuity Man, America's Annuity Agent. I am so glad you joined me today. We actually have royalty in our midst. Her name is Cheryl Garrett. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to her for the full time period and maybe go over that because she is so knowledgeable and I'm so happy that she's here. But let me tell you a little bit about her and then I'll have her go into details about who she is and how she came to this place of, uh, of fame in the financial planning world. She's the co-founder of Garrett Investment Advisors, now known as CGN Advisors, and ha she's been called the All-American Planner because she is kind of the starter of this fee-only, hourly-based financial planning model. Um, she started Garrett Planning Network in 2000. She's been recognized mm -hmm. six times by Invest Investment Advisor Magazine as one of the most in influential people in financial planning. Um, we could keep going. She's won just about every award out there. Um, and a recent podcast guest who uh, I had on Rick Ferry is a protege of hers. And she said before we got, uh, went on that she's a, uh, the, kind of the leader of his fan club and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But both of them pound the table on simplistic fee only planning. And I think that's very, very important. I mean, she has been in front of Congress and the House Subcommittee on Financial Services. She has authored and co-authored several uh, you know, books and done magazine columns. I mean, you're going to know who she is because you're going, oh, wait a minute, I read something with her. She's been in everything. And she's written books like Garrett's Guide to Financial Planning, Just Give Me the Answers, The Last S is a Dollar Sign, Money Without Matrimony, Personal Finance Workbook for Dummies, um, et cetera. We could keep going on, but Cheryl Garrett is the... I mean, even President Obama recognized her as just just for the things that she's done in this country. And she continues to give, and we're going to go into that, but without further ado, rock star Cheryl Garrett, welcome <laughs> oh to Fun with Annuities. Well, I'm delighted to be here, but I'm like completely humbled. <laughs> well, you should, well, I mean... You've it's like, who's this other person? <laughs> no, I mean, you've accomplished a lot in the world of financial advice where well, it's more kinda, bad than good. It's, yeah, it's easy to stand out among the crowd. <laughs> I guess right. I guess you're right about that. Tell me, let's go back to 1999 going into 2000. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking to yourself, you know what? Pioneers take all the arrows. Why don't mm -hmm. I start a planning network? Yeah. Take us through that. Um, it wasn't any, any thought along those lines. Well, not quite. A little bit of my brain went there, but most of it, it was, I was out there employed by myself saying, I can serve my clients the best way that I feel they need to be taken care of. I have the freedom and liberty to go wherever and, and access whatever it is that they need. And I charge for my time. I don't charge for assets. I don't charge by their body weight mass index or any <laughs> other squirrely kind of measurement, but just for my time. Um, and it seemed quite simplistic. And I was finding out that I was getting a lot of attention within our industry because I was doing something so abnormal as to not manage money and not sell products. Um, and I still got paid for the time that I was spending. And so, you know, it all basically boils down to what do you have? I mean, we all make money, but we all make money in different ways. And as a general practitioner, financial planner type of person, I would talk to people about all different kinds of subjects from, you know, can we afford to relocate? If we did, should we add that room? Um, you know, how should I take a distribution? I mean, investments, insurance, um, I mean, that may be part of it, but a lot of it is cash flow. A mm -hmm. lot of it's dreams and ambitions and fears and 
um, you know, how can we cope with the mother-in-law moving in? And, um, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, personal, financial, economic, um, psychological things that are coming together all at once. And I see the, the generalist um, planner's role as to kind of help clients see through all of that and, and reach out to the appropriate specialists when they need certain products or services built, fulfilled for the clients. Um, and so I started deciding to, um, you know, I was going to offer this service to individuals um, selling my time. And I was actually at the point where I didn't know whether they would sit down for a meeting. But uh, um, within a couple of years, it became such a beloved service in my city of Kansas City at the time that uh, I had to stop taking new clients, um, you know, within two years. That's how mm -hmm. simply by charging for my time um, and finding that there's awful lot of people that need advice and um, you know, need to bounce off ideas, or I've just been offered something, you know, can I take advantage of it? Mm -hmm. How will it fit in? And that kind of thing. And so um, it just provided that unique way of access. And I got contacted by a whole lot of advisors around the country. And they said, I want to do what you're doing. And I didn't know whether we would have a dozen study buddies around the country that help support each other to, um, you know, be able to serve our clients without going insane, <laughs> or if we would turn into, you know, a multi-thousand member, um, well, kind of the fee-only equivalent to a broker-dealer, um, as one of my early colleagues had suggested that we do. And I said, well, um, you know, I'm a lot more about flexibility and, and the practitioner, the professional's personal judgment, um, because they're the ones on the hook. I don't want to be dictating for people. But I found out that there was a lot of people interested in this and, and um, aligning yourself with like-minded peers, regardless of the industry mm -hmm. that you're in, is usually a dang good thing. Um, and the fact that we can help support each other, there's an immense amount of opportunity to help people out there. And we just, you know, like you had found out in your discussions with Rick Ferry, by charging for your time, there's no barrier to entry other than, you know, how much, how much time do I need to spend with you? Um, and are you willing to pay for that? And if so, we can get going. So um, it's pretty clear, transparent, and it applies to the areas of personal finance that um, most of the time advisors don't get paid to focus on. And often that's where we do need to spend some serious time in addition to traditionally paid um, areas. So I like the ability to be truly holistic and go where the client needs me to go. Um, we're talking to Cheryl Garrett and she is, she has um, created a firm called the Garrett planning network mm -hmm. and we're going to have the, the a permanent page on our site for her so you can go to these links if you want to write it down it's garrett g-a-r-r-e-t-t -T, planning network all one word dot com and what it is is what she just described it's a in essence a it's not a broker dealer but it's 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 a conglomeration of fee only advisors across the country that follow the same type of principles that Cheryl initially laid out. Um, but I think what's interesting, Cheryl, is I come from the broker dealer world of Dean Witter, Payne Weber, Morgan Stanley, mm -hmm. UBS, where we transitioned from transactional, I was there during the transactional years, to then mm -hmm. it's fee, fee based, mm -hmm. where it's based on an asset under management. But what I think is fantastic is what's happening right now, and you're the, you're the pioneer of this, which is it's not about the assets under management, you know, and you, you hear the advertising on TV without mentioning names that, you know, we're sitting on your side of the table, mm -hmm. you know, when, when your, um, when your portfolio goes up, we get paid more, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, they also get paid when it goes down. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so I'm not putting them down. I'm not going to call mm -hmm. them out. They do enough advertising. We know who they are, but I, do you see this as a trend that keeps growing because obviously it runs contrary to the broker dealer 
fee-based on, fee on assets under management model? Mm -hmm. um, I definitely see it growing from the public perspective. The industry isn't really interested. Those providers, mm -hmm. um, you know, advisors out there, there's, it's more lucrative sure. to work with a very wealthy client, um, managing everything. And some of it doesn't take a heck of a lot of management. Right. But those individuals may be able to justify paying a substantial sum for your attention. Most Americans or most humans don't qualify for that level of expenditure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to pick good words. That's, that, that was, be, that was nice. That was yeah, nice. they don't. <laughs> it, you know, it's kind of like we could hire a nanny, a live-in nanny to take care of our children, or we could get a really great babysitter. And, you know, that's a really good correlation. That's really good. Depending on what you need and how much you want to pay and can pay, Mm -hmm. We still want great care for our children. You know, it's just, do you need an occasional help or do you need somebody to live in and take care of everything? And I, I would like people to look at it that way because a whole bunch of you are paying for it, um, the full-time attention and care, and you're not really getting much for it. And that's because there's not much to get. Um, you know, I think a regular review of your personal finances and all aspects is appropriate. Mm -hmm. What's regular, that's going to depend on your situation and what's going on in your life. With most people, I find that cash flow happens time or hopefully happens, but is it happening where it's going out more than it's going in? Mm -hmm. um, and then we have these other things like you know, our underlying insurance, which I was having a pretty significant conversation um, last evening with a family member regarding um, property and casualty insurance costs and my mm -hmm. concern, and actually it's mm -hmm. unraveling and I mean, maybe not quite unraveling, but almost in Florida um, and people that live in um, really frequently storm hit areas um, I live in Tornado Alley, um, mm -hmm. and uh, right now, um, or at least in the last approximately year, and I'm sure it's going to continue, is roofs in Florida, um, if you don't have a new roof, you might lose your insurance carrier. And these are the types of things mm -hmm. that someone with a holistic approach to financial planning and advice tries to think about, um, you know, for their clients, whereas, you know, if I were um, a stockbroker or a money mm -hmm. manager or a, an annuity provider, you know, I'd be focusing on those areas. And so that's yeah. one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of hourly or time-based advice yeah. for the big picture stuff. And then going to the um, independent specialists um, for the specific things, because just to think about what could happen and look at our risks. I'm one area that I'm, um, probably i tend to be early <laughs> about everything yeah um, obviously yeah you're way early on this one that's an understatement yeah um i do tend to be a bit early to things maybe 20 or 30 years i you know i think it was probably 30 or 35 years ago i called for um um block Buster video to go out of business because of streaming video. Sure. I was just a few decades early. <laughs> uh, maybe a couple. Um, but I really see that, you know, everybody has questions about their personal finances. And sure. I do I do have to agree our industry hasn't done anything to make it easier. And thank goodness for you, Stan, to be out there putting some bits of clarity and, and wisdom um, and help clear the muck for people, which is also something I try to do in my area, because there's, there's so much garbage and, sure. and a lot of just plain confusion. Yep. Um, and how we're motivated, you know, the influences that we may get, um, mm -hmm. some of the work that I've done um, with my certified financial planning background, I got into, actually, we may have talked about this at one time, but um, I think your audience would enjoy it. I was being interviewed by the Wall Street Journal one time, 
And I said that I felt most Americans would be best suited to take their monthly pension payout from their pension plan upon mm -hmm. retirement. Mm -hmm. And I received a telephone call from an attorney in Cal and me being in, in Kansas in the, on the Kansas city area, um, on the Kansas side. And I got a call from Sacramento, California, um, a couple days later, an attorney from there was working on a series of lawsuits, um, where advisors encouraged individuals that were retiring or had early retirement available or option through their employer that advisor ur urged these people to take early retirement invest the money with her and unfortunately it did not go well and 11 month 11 years later most of these individuals were broke um, and they were in their late 40s early 50s when they made this decision to retire and to me that if anybody told somebody you can afford to retire under those circumstances with just the information that, that this individual had, it was criminal and sure. it really disturbed me. And, and I got involved with a series of cases and um, it was all based on that one concept of when the attorney called me, said, you know, why, or what did you say? And I said, that most people would be best served to take their monthly pension mm -hmm. or the monthly stream of income. So they don't have to worry about investing. They don't have to worry whether they'll, it'll come every month. And he's like, you are unlike any financial advisor, financial planner I have ever met. And I said, well, it might be because I didn't, don't get paid differently mm -hmm. depending on the answer. Every financial, I'm telling the, the attorney, every financial advisor for the most part, well, okay, let me rephrase, everyone, <laughs> um, <laughs> if they, they need to get their hands on that lump sum. Sure. And so, hence the reason I actually worked with um, or spoke with the um, Department of Education and Department of Labor a few times um, on you know, the fact that pensions are getting busted. I mean, people aren't choosing to keep their pension intact um, upon retirement and take just monthly distributions. Instead, um, they're rolling the lump sum over to an IRA. And I said, it's not, it's not that the retirees or um, um, participants are necessarily choosing to do that. It's that they've heard some presentation or mm -hmm. had some education in their workplace. And, um, you know, there's also that underlying thing of, oh, you know, if I don't spend it all, it's going to go back to my company. Um, if I mm -hmm. die with money in the account. Well, there is that component potentially a it doesn't go back to your company um that depends you know, on how you structure it obviously yeah. yeah may go back to the plan but right. it doesn't it doesn't go back to the you know parent company or something um but a lot of people are misled sure because of of the conflicts that many of us have and as i was talking to my 11 year old daughter the other day and we were watching a program that had a lot of pharmaceutical ads on it. And I said, I think it's just silly that these companies are advertising to us because we as individual citizens cannot go out and purchase their products. So there's millions of dollars <laughs> exactly. trying to get me to buy that yellow pill or that blue pill or the purple mm -hmm. one. And I don't even know what they're for, but you know, those people look so healthy and robust. I want exactly. some of that. And unfortunately, financial services commercials look about the same and they all sound about the same. And so it's really difficult to know, you know, who's really on your side, you know, who is on the same side of the table who's actually looking about the quality of life type of matters not just are you getting okay return on your portfolio you know if you don't have a roof <laughs> or you end up with an extra five or six thousand dollar insurance premium bill mm -hmm. for a year um because you didn't know to even think about those kind of issues that's that's one of the things that uh um, 
a financial planner gets to focus on is those broad subjects. So the idea of coming together in 2000 to form the Garrett Planning Network enabled me as this island out there going, I'm trying to help people, but I am only as knowledgeable as what I've been exposed to. And then you get together with a lot of peers and you start sharing stories and challenges and you say, you know, if you had this situation, how would you approach it? And you start getting better because the power of the, the global mind um, to solve problems and approach solutions, it's just, it's just very, very uh, powerful. And the types of people we tend to attract to our membership or our um, good old fashioned, um, you know, high integrity, they obviously didn't get in the business to make the most amount of money the fastest, mm -hmm. or they wouldn't be selling their time. Right. Um, you know, they'd have to sell it for thousands of dollars an hour. So um, nobody will pay that. So there's still the um, humans, so we still recognize the value of a dollar when somebody's saying, okay, that's going to cost you a thousand dollars to have me do that. Whereas somebody else might say, oh, I'll take care of that for you. And off of that nest egg, they will pull a thousand dollars and you won't feel it. Um, you may not even really know it. I know when I have drafts coming out of my bank account, it's, you know, out of mind, out of sight. I don't really mm -hmm. feel the pain. But when I have cash in my hand and, and I have to go, you know, decide whether I really want to part with it, right. <laughs> it's hard to do. So I try not to, to use electronics to transfer money or spend money. And, you know, those are just the little tricks that I had to learn on, on working with myself. And then we spread that to others. <laughs> so. And by, by the way, for everyone listening, you might have caught this really nice bird in the background that's singing Cheryl's praises in the background. There's a bird back there that's just, just very happy. That Cheryl's on this podcast, you can hear it in the background. That is not planned. That's, I guess, divine financial planning intervention, which is pretty cool. What I like about your site, Cheryl, is I was there and, and it's, you know, how do you get started is how mm -hmm. do you choose an advisor? It's very, very basic. I love simplicity and you have made it mm -hmm. simple to where you, when you go to the next page, you actually can get some tips from Cheryl, but also gives you interview questionnaires if you want to mm -hmm. go and meet with an advisor and how to search for an advisor. I'm assuming that's in all, pretty much every single state, but she makes it very, very simple for you to, to go find interview, no mm -hmm. obligation, and find that, that fee only planner. And I think mm -hmm. that's yeah. pretty cool. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up, Stan. It's been one of the hottest topics that I've talked to the media about for probably the last three or four years is how to find an advisor that's right for me. Mm -hmm. And it's sad that that happens to be a topic that makes headlines. But it's, so, it's such an important one. It though. is. It's, it's critical. It's, uh, to me, I also look at it as, you know, we've been trained to go get a second opinion if we have a significant metal, medical mm -hmm. um, issue come up. Mm -hmm. um, but why in the world do we not get a second opinion if we're getting ready to make a decision as, as significant as retirement? Mm -hmm. And, you know, do we know that we're ready financially? Are we ready mentally? Maybe, mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully we feel that and we're enthusiastic about it. But I've met so many very educated, intelligent people that, um, you know, bless their hearts, they didn't, I mean, someone like myself could look at the nest egg and know it won't work. Um, the amount of income that they needed to live on and the size of their nest egg, you just don't have enough money um, to support the standard of living. So what do you want to do? You can either cut your lifestyle dramatically or you can raise your income or some combination of the two. And so, you know, sometimes we, as Americans, I think may have it the worst um, as far as there's a lot of stimuli out there that gets our attention and dealing with our personal finances was one of the things that 
even I like to bury my head in the sand when it comes to taxes. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, and sometimes insurance. Sure. Um, yep. You know, the, these are not sexy topics. They're not interesting. You don't go to the ball game and say, hey, did you, you want to hear about my new insurance policy? <laughs> no. Um, no, I don't. But, it sure feels great when, you know, you have that moment when you had a, a bad doctor checkup or you were fearing one, um, or you have uh, that glimmer of, of, oh, we just nearly had an accident. Mm -hmm. And you go, thank goodness, I've got my stuff together. You know, that, that if anything happened to me, I'm now a, a sole parent. My spouse passed away mm -hmm. less than a year ago. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm a single parent. What happens if something happens to me? And right. I haven't updated that stuff yet. Okay, so cobbler's children here. <laughs> Come um, on, planner. It's time, we, right? <laughs> yeah, we have to just, we have to know what needs to be done and we have right. to be able to get it, get it going. So I feel that one of the, our highest uh, um, roles as a certified financial planner um, is to be the catalyst to help people get where they say they want to go and, and, and help with, do it most efficiently. My apologies for interrupting, but I am so excited to share with the listeners uh, and I want you to go to our site, when, but I'm going to give it away a little bit. When you search for an advisor, obviously you're going to be able to search by the state of residence. Mm -hmm. But what I really, really like what Cheryl has done and put together with her team is you can select an option. You can select if you want to do a phone consultation or web, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you're military, um, if you're looking, for, uh, if you need questions about real estate investing, if you're a retiree, if you're special needs, if you're looking at stock options mm -hmm. or restricted stock, taxation, unmarried widowers, um, retirement planning, whether you're bilingual, you need mm -hmm. a specific language, long-term care, mm -hmm. everything. And as I scroll down, what I like about it is like, it's not just find your planner, here's the state, here are the planners. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. What specifically do you want to talk about? Insurance planning, mortgage planning, health care, mm -hmm. federal employee type planning, expatriates, yeah. estate planning? It, it helps you, you, to get us to really broaden our yes. thoughts about, oh, oh, yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah, and, and I like that that option because a lot of times – Yes, people need um, family advisors. Yes, people need a broad-based look. But most people mm -hmm. come to the table with a specific issue in mind Absolutely. that they really, really want the answer uh -huh. to. And then after that gets done, they can go, okay, whew, let's exactly. talk about the rest. And I right. think that is absolute genius and foresight on your part to put that in there from finding your advisors. Let's mm -hmm. talk about when you go to the site, obviously there's that client portal about you know how mm -hmm. to choose your advisor, et cetera. But at the very bottom, under where it shows that you've been in you know, Bloomberg, Kiplinger, USA Today, Yahoo, ARP, every single thing on the planet, and she deserves it. Um, financial planners join the network. I've mm -hmm. got a feeling your filter's pretty tough. Tell us about how if some planner says, yeah, this sounds like great. I'm getting in front of a lot of people. How do you how do you filter the yahoos out <laughs> to become Cheryl Garrett disciples? Well, they have to sign an attestation statement that kind of says, "I believe in the same stuff that Cheryl does." <laughs> and and um, I think we're this is our 22nd year of existence. Wow. And I think we've only had one application where we had to call the individual back and said that would say, we will not accept you. That, <laughs> um, you know, people, people do inquire that sure. won't be a good fit, but we've never actually gotten a membership application, but one time that I recall, um, there may have been a couple others that, you know, there was some conflict, um, such as if someone has, um, disciplinary um, disclosures on, in the record, which is not necessarily all that ab abnormal, mm -hmm. um, but 
on the par or the uh, chapter in uh, on our website that talks about finding an advisor. Mm -hmm. um, it's an excerpt from um, the personal finance workbook for dummies that I wrote, mm -hmm. and the publisher gave me permission to excerpt that chapter on finding an, an interview and advisor. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I say in there is don't hire anybody with any disciplinary stuff on their record. And we tell would be advisors that we say that to the public because sure. there's plenty of people to pick that don't have anything on the record. Um, now, there's some other nuances to think about, you know, mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, if you worked for a giant company, yes. um, a giant broker dealer, there's going to be stuff on the, on the disclosure, but it won't necessarily be about the specific advisor, um, but it'll be about the firm. But, you know, we can see, I mean, we can work through that kind of stuff. But if there's, if there's disclosures about the individual, just keep looking. Um, life's, mm -hmm. life, life's short. There's, there's lots of advisors out there. There's not sure. very many that charge for their time. Um, you know, that's a shame. We, yeah. That's, it, and the reason that that doesn't happen at the brokerage firms is it's not because that the brokerage firms believe in a asset based fee only fee, fee based money. It's not fee only fee based on the asset, asset under management. Mm -hmm. It's because it's a very easy way for them to track future revenues. That's mm -hmm. it. Don't believe mm -hmm. anything else that they tell you. But that's it. I'm on your site also, and I want to mm -hmm. kind of read some things to the, and go over some things for the listeners and viewers. And again, you can go to Garrett Financial Planning, uh, Garrett Planning Network.com. Garrett Planning Network.com. We'll have that link on our site as well. But but all of the members within the Garrett Planning Network, they're they're fee only, meaning that mm -hmm. they are prohibited from receiving commissions or any type of compensation mm -hmm. for the sale of a product. The, the, mm -hmm. the compensation is paid directly by the client. All of the people are fiduciaries. Mm -hmm. I have a little bugaboo about fiduciary. I think if you're in the financial services business, you, I mean, you have to put the person's best interest ahead mm -hmm. of yours, but her people are obligated both ethically and legally mm -hmm. to do that. And by choice. And, you know, by, and by we choice. We would not do it any other way. I agree. Um, I, I don't care what you're doing out here. The other thing I like about is every one of her members of the Garrett Planning Network has to be accessible. And what that means is they, they all charge based on the time to provide advice mm -hmm. without requiring any type of long-term commitments mm -hmm. or minimums or net worth or anything like that. This is a pure fee-only service, which I love. I absolutely love. And I encourage you know, my listeners and my client base and the people that follow me, you know, when I come, I, I always say, not only do you not need, you might not even need an annuity, but if you need an annuity, you certainly don't need to put, you know, a ton of money in annuities, which means what do you do with the rest? So talk about what do you do with the rest or all of it? Mm -hmm. You're, we're, we're here. We're at the fork in the road. So pick it up. <laughs> and, uh -huh. and, and there are people that can help you in this pure financial planning fashion. I think this is the purest form of financial advice out there. And I applaud you for, for plowing this field. Cause I'm sure when you started, people were like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> A lot of people in the industry are like, you know, putting their arm around me going, I realize you're young and you're new. <laughs> Like, oh, I look like a kid at 60. Thank you. Um, but uh, um, yeah, naivete is helpful. And I had a very positive outlook. And I grew up in Kansas. And, you know, I was raised that a girl can do anything she sets her mind to. So I was never told I couldn't do it. And mm -hmm. when I was when I, I had I had spent um, 11 years in, in the financial planning arena. Okay. before I landed upon charging by the hour. And it was- Tell one us of about those, that epiphany. What was it, that it, it, moment? It actually moment? was. Um, I was sharing this desire with a, um, an elder care um, estate planning attorney. And he said, that sounds a lot like the national network of uh, estate planning attorneys. And we started talking and, and I talked to him about the fact that, you know, basically by charging by the hour, it's more like 
how he charged his clients mm -hmm. for, um, you know, consulting with them about an elder care issue or designing an estate plan. He might charge, you know, a certain amount of hours for that project and, and just, you know, buy the hour for the elder care stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, you know, A, I want to charge that way. And, um, you know, I also... Um, have others that want to do this. And, you know, I think we need to, instead of being part of a large company where you have to pay for the overhead and the managers and, you know, the bureaucracy, and does it add anything to the bottom line, having your own research department, having your own mutual funds or own products or whatever, is that necessary? Or are there other places you can get it? And at that time, you can get that stuff elsewhere. You know, there are lots of mutual fund companies that are available for us to go directly to them. A lot of insurance companies we can work with directly, or we go to specialized participants that are experts in those mm -hmm. areas. And so, you know, to simply be able to, you know, work on what somebody needs us to focus on, you know, one project that I did that it helps to, um, to illustrate the power or the, you know, the uniqueness of financial planning over investment advice um, was a couple came to me that um, they were in their 50s and they wanted to see if they could take advantage of a job offer. They were living in Kansas City, both employed, and she had been offered a position in Boston. Um, cost of living significantly higher, cost of, or, or the uh, wages also considerably higher. Mm -hmm. However, the husband lived at, or had a very unique, uh, specialized kind of field that he was in, and they didn't anticipate he would be able to find a like position as quickly, like it could take a couple of years maybe. Um, and we wanted to be really conservative about his income potential. Um, since actually in this case, hers was the biggest component of the overall, um, it was pretty easy to illustrate. And so the couple came in not knowing, you know, they were enthused by the offer, but they didn't know if it would derail their long-term, um, you know, if we, if we took, they came to me and they said, if we take this or if we do this, would it just completely decimate our plans for 10 years from now? I mean, would mm -hmm. this be a stupid financial decision? Mm -hmm. And so we spent like two and a half hours figuring it out and were able to answer that with some clarity that they could consciously um, feel very confident about what they decide before it was just gut instinct. And, and that freed them up to, oh, okay, now can, can we look at this next thing? And can we look at this next thing? So they needed an opportunity to get to know somebody, develop some trust and working relationship and understanding how you talk to each other. And, um, and then they found out what it was like, you know, to work with a financial planner on their side. And, and it was, oh, this is so different than anything I ever um, imagined or experienced um, so I heard that mostly from all of my clients that I was mm -hmm. seeing in Kansas City as an hourly advisor. Most of them had not been to an advisor ever, um, or they hadn't been to somebody they referred to as their advisor. They might have visited with someone, yeah. but they didn't choose to call them an advisor, even if they worked with them at some point or did business. Well, the interesting part about the financial planning world is anyone can truly call themselves a financial planner. Mm -hmm. There's no minimum experience and you don't need an education background, yeah. et cetera, even though there's some places like Texas Tech that have, that mm -hmm. have actual degrees and master's degrees. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they know, and they certainly PhD. know you and uh -huh. you've talked with them, uh, mm -hmm. Dina Katz and everybody. But, um, but when you work with, with Cheryl's organization, you know, the Garrett, uh, the Garrett Planning Network, you can rest assured that that person um, is going to be working in your best interest. And I think that's mm -hmm. really all people are looking for. They don't, yeah. they know you're not a magician, that. but they, they want to know that they can have a conversation with the person mm -hmm. that there's, that that's going to use their, their, as I always say, the best advisors use their mouth and their ears in proportion. <laughs> exactly. And, um, and it sounds like that's, that's, kind of what you guys do. Mm -hmm. 
I got a couple questions for you because you piqued my interest when you talked about predictions and I'm not going to hold you to any of this, but since you are somewhat of a visionary in the financial field, but remember I'm always early everyone. I understand, but that's good. <laughs> um, we're, there's always things happening in the world. And every mm -hmm. time that we feel like there's a bunch of black swan events, there's a lot always been mm -hmm. black swan events and things that are happening. But where do you see things going from a financial planning standpoint, how people manage money? We see the, the, um, the birthing of, of things like Robin Hood and, and applications mm -hmm. to try to get people involved at a younger age at a very right. low level, which I, on the surface, I see no problems mm -hmm. with that. Where is this all headed? Because I, we're both kind of the same age. So we saw it go from transactional to mm -hmm. then assets under management fee mm -hmm. to then Schwab, TD, Ameritrade, Fidelity, Vanguard to now I think the maturation of what you're doing finally. I mean, you're a 20 year overnight sensation, as they say, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the fee only model and, and just charging for time, which I think is so good. What's next? Cheryl? Um, what next needs to be, we need a heck of a lot more of us. Um, okay. I, I computed um, in late 90s that we would need about, I, I, if I'm recalling right, we'd need something like 300,000 advisors just to approach 2% of the population. Um, wow. So, there's an enormous opportunity in providing advice by the hour. It's still rare. It's because the work is on the advisor to keep track of their time and justify, mm -hmm. you know, I spent X amount of time on this and hopefully it's meaningful to you. Um, but it, it, it is harder, um, but it should be. You know, if we're going to charge a nice hefty fee um, and provide good value to people, mm -hmm. you know, it can't be easy, but it's so rewarding. You know, most Americans don't realize that there are options to hiring an advisor and paying for their time only. Mm -hmm. That's one of the huge areas. Um, the second area is if they do contact us, will they be able to find an advisor that's available soon in their area? And so it's kind of a catch-22 right. because um, the advisory public and the consuming public consumers of advice, you know, kind of have to grow together. Um, and we've seen a little bit of that, but there's far more acceptance and desire in the consumer of advice category than there are in the providers thus far. But it's changing, and I think it's changing very rapidly. When I talk to college campuses and talk to some mm -hmm. of the newer uh, folks coming out of college, they want to do something unique, different, and in a way that their actual friends and classmates could hire them. And fulfilling. And, so, and fulfilling. I think and, that and fulfilling. The to, people, to, people like you are passionate. And uh -huh. I think it runs contrary to the financial services business of get in the financial services business, go to Wall Street, make as much money as humanly possible. I used to work in World Trade Center too a long time ago. And uh -huh. so I, I was in that culture of go, 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 make as much money as humanly possible. But I think that fortunately, the younger generation, I'm speaking for my daughters, mm -hmm. they're not into that. And they're right. more into it being fulfilling what they're doing and it feels good and it's right. And they're doing good things right. for the world. I think there's a possibility that the mm -hmm. new group of advisors, that this will be what they know. Whereas uh -huh. people like me and you that were in the business a long time ago, we've mm -hmm. kind of seen it all. You know, I, I was, I was around, you'll love this story with Dean Witter when the, uh, the guy came in and the vice president and talked to all this advisors and wealth architects, uh -huh. whatever they were calling us and said, I really don't see a threat with like on to online trading and things like that. Uh -huh. I'm like, you're the dumbest person on the planet. <laughs> so, um, you know, yeah, it's kind of like, the, it's kinda like <laughs> the IBM executive a long time ago saying he didn't see the need for a personal computer in everyone's uh -huh. home. And you're like, okay. So going back to my original, um, outside the box, just a little bit, not just mm -hmm. in the planning world, um, tell us about your, your insights and foresight into money, the way money works mm -hmm. going into the future. And that might throw in crypto and all kinds of mm -hmm. new and weird stuff that's happening. 
how are you advising clients on those type of things? Well, I don't advise individual clients, but, but all I'm of just the listeners saying that can your pretend advisors, they're my clients. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, there's a few areas that I'm really uh, focusing on of late, and that is, I mean, one of the areas that we've long been focusing on is controlling what you can control. Uh, you know, when you take taxes or taxable gains, um, how much you pay in fees. Um, when you receive income or when you choose to make an expenditure. Um, mm -hmm. We, as a society, I don't think we've um, necessarily taken on or owned as much of our responsibility for, you know, making those decisions and, and knowing that we have control over those things. Maybe not full control, but we do choose. Um, and now we're learning that there's a heck of a lot more that we can influence. Um, mm -hmm. Need to be a lot more aggressive, a lot, most of us, I'm generalizing, um, about our cash flow. Um, and we need mm -hmm. to be a lot more aggressive about, I mean, and I, when I say aggressive about our cash flow, we need to really be conscious of where our money's going and where it's coming from, where it will in the future. And think of things like, is there anything I could do to create a form of income such as the property for sale or there's a property for sale next door and it has a rundown house on it that I want to fix up. That's actually okay. a true story. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, and then the house I'm setting in, we built um, right after that. And so I have a rental house next door because it happened to be setting on the land that was surrounding um, our log cabin resort. Mm -hmm. And it would make sense for us to secure that. And it was a very, very good price. And now um, I have someone living in the house and their, the rent that they pay pays the mortgage on the piece of land that I wanted to buy. And, you know, so I basically got it for free. Um, there you go. And, you know, helping families or young couples in um, caring for a family member um, or setting up an income suite in their, you know, out of part of their house um, to make it go, you know, their housing go further with uh, um, another lady. She, she either needed to rent out her basement or significantly downsize her mm -hmm. lifestyle. And I was, I had been acquainted with some people with the, our uh, county's department on aging, and they have a wonderful program where they match up um, older people with younger people, students, um, and, and or other older people to see, you know, if they could cohabitate um, and, in a prosperous way for the two of them and one of my client's children introduced her to the project then she got into it and um this client i i've learned so much from my clients about planning and planning strategies this mm -hmm. was all brought to me by a client um which she learned it from her 22 year old um the 22 year old moved in while she was going to college she moved in with an elderly person who needed t um, care at night they only needed somebody to be there um to help make sure that they were, they were okay um it really wasn't a, a care you know a nursing type of position or anything like that it was just housing mm -hmm. um and you just have to stay here every night um and you know make sure i took my meds and that kind of thing well, this woman ended or the the mother ended up doing the same thing. She didn't own a vehicle. She drove a company. She was a repair person, mm -hmm. worked for a large company, and she drove a company vehicle, lived in an elderly man's home that she cared for for 12 years at the time of this story. Mm -hmm. And she by the time she was in her mid 40s, she had nearly a half a million dollars in her 401k plan and Whoa. she never made over $45,000 a year. Wow. Because she found in her community that would enable her to have more life with less money um, and 
she she loved her activities and and the freedoms that those kinds of things bring and so learning strategies that will help in that way so increasing income that's one of the first areas that i go to and see if there's any way and it might be different ways but right now with such a housing shortage or, or a low lower income lower priced um, rental properties or or for sale properties um, having a, an additional dwelling unit or something like that on your on your you know in your yard or on your property um, potentially even investing in some of these projects right. so I've explored some of those um, you know really be cutthroat about our expenses and think about um, you know I'm a, a, a strong believer in experiences Mm -hmm. uh, over things uh, as far as lasting meaningful memories and so many of the things you know we are americans have more things than anybody else no in history and um you know to take on a little bit of a minimalist um idea and start to purge and you know maybe it's even you know it's somewhere between how do we get rid of all this stuff or how do we um, maybe sell it and bring in a little income um, and then the whole area of sustainable lifestyles mm -hmm. um, kind of like sustainable agriculture um, or or um, um, you know where we we have um, a uh, um, a sustainable garden mm -hmm. that everything is, you know, like my, my uh, front yard is a mini orchard and everything is perennial. Um, so once, once it's planted and established, it takes minimal care. That's what I like to accomplish in someone's financial life is, you know, get all of the, the things set up that once they're set up, a little minimal care will keep them in order. But gosh, if one of the things we're concerned about is independence, I argue that you can't achieve financial independence with just money. I mean, true. maybe that's the literal definition, but the money true. has to be turned into other things. You have to buy health care, you have to buy food, you have to buy utilities. Um, but what if you're generating your own utility, your own electricity, um, and you have the ability to store it? Um, what if you're generating a good amount of your own food, or at least in my mm -hmm. case, fruit? <laughs> right. We have a lot of local gardeners and a lot of, um, um, you know, growers in, in the area. And so I don't feel really motivated that in that regard, but to be independent to a large degree in the food area. I'm also vegetarian, so that makes it easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the chickens are coming this summer, yeah. um, uh, guinea fowl. And uh, so, you know, I, I have a, a water, um, energy, um, and- uh, so, so it's lifestyle. I mean, I, and it, I tell people all the time- It's security in the lifestyle, you right. know, it's the sustainability of it. I always um, tell and my clients, to, my clients, I tell them, excuse me, I say, listen, there's no U-Hauls behind hearses. Okay? <laughs> right. You know, and, and you need to, you need to live your life. A lot of my things are Southernisms, you know, uh -huh. um, but I agree with you totally. I am um, coming up on the, on the end of the, uh, end of the segment here. And I wanted to, uh, cover a couple items and then turn it back to you one mm -hmm. last time. Um, first thing is that I was thinking about this network that you put together. And I think if you hired someone within the Garrett planning network, an advisor fee only, there's an added benefit that I don't think Cheryl promotes enough. And I think that added benefit is yes, you're going to get an advisor locally that's fee only. And yes, they're going to be fiduciary and yes, they're going to have your best interest at, at, at hand but you're also hiring the other people in the network because they have annual retreats and they have conferences and they share mm -hmm. best practices and they share stories and they share ideas. Mm -hmm. So in essence, you're leveraging off of what Cheryl's built with your one advisor. Mm -hmm. So I think that is unbelievable. Yes, there are some great advisors out there, but nobody has 
we all, don't know at all. all the Percocets. <laughs> they, they really yeah. don't. They really that don't. Was, thank you for that, Stan. I, I haven't, ha- haven't really spoken to it from the client's perspective. I think of it more from the advisor's perspective of how luxurious is it to have a, a situation um, come up and you can turn to your colleagues and say, okay, guys, here's what I've got going on. Yes. What would you do? Yes. Um, and you can get all kind. And in fact, I've done that in a bunch of times. All right, we're, adding a, we're adding a page to your website. Okay. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's called the l- leveraging the brains. The bra- yeah. Know, the, I mean, the brain power. Something um, the like that. But I think that's also a hidden um, benefit to this. Obviously you're, yeah. you're, you're, getting advice in its purest form. One last thing, there's, and I, and I, I do I this. have to share one other yeah. thing with you, Stan. Go ahead. Um, there's a new, well, it's not new, um, but something that, was, that happened after I stopped working with individual clients, that if I was going back to work with individual clients, I'd be doing this all the time. And it's something we call real-time planning, where often on the, you know, we may talk on the phone for a brief while, and then we get together and it can be done remotely as well. Um, but we have a real time planning session. And for like two hours, we just roll up our sleeves and work together. And at the end of that time, I'll follow up with a report saying, you know, a report that's like one page, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, this is what we need to do. You need to do. And, and this is what you decided and so forth. And so there's an, a, a noticeable, um, you know, instant gratification from working with an advisor. I mean, you, you don't have to wait for advice to be prepared and, you know, that there, you can get direction immediately on certain things. A lot of us don't do that for investment portfolios. Mm-hmm. We might do, you know, general guidance um, at that kind of level. But if you're looking about a decision regarding relocating, um, uh, life change, um, just getting started in a relationship or just getting started with a planner, that can be a great way to do it yep. because you know, the total cost, you know, it's usually say five to $700. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you get a chance for a limited amount of money to really, you know, ha- get organized, have your questions ready. They'll send you a, a questionnaire of some sort. Um, to lay out your stuff so you can think about your your financial life and and really be ready to use that time with that advisor as as well as possible and it's it's thoroughly a, it's a mind blowing thing we we um, our group has has led training um, through this and I had had a number of advisors providing hourly advice for a long time and then they went through this level of training and they said it is mind blowing what you can accomplish in 90 minutes if you have to. Well, and also too, when people know that they're not going to get sold a product, they're going to get uh-huh. listened to and they're going to get good advice. Yeah. When I, when I got into the business, I started with IDS, which is now Ameriprise oh, sure. yeah. and uh, where a lot of us started and people wouldn't even tell me that they had a CD coming due next year. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Whereas, I went fee only and people came in and they just dumped all their original statements on our desks and said, I'll see you later. And it's like, hold it. Now that's an extreme, the other direction. (laughs) I remember that they used to tell us when we were first starting out, I was with Dean Wooded, like, don't believe that they're telling you everything that they have. Uh And they kept saying that every place I went, they'd say that. I'm like, and in this situation, they do. Uh, My apologies for interrupting you earlier, but I'm dying to hear this because um, with every one of my guests, I, I have something at the end that I don't tell them about. That they're oh, have to, yep. This is like, a, <laughs> this, is a, this is one of those things that you had to be prepared for. You almost have already done it. And what I call it's the mic drop moment. And you get 30 seconds when I say go to give really sage advice in 30 seconds, like a oh. elevator speech, but you gave, you, I think you've already done it. You said financial independence doesn't, rec- doesn't revolve around your money. Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, well, there, you know, that's actually a mic drop moment. But because, you know, you're who you are, Cheryl Garrett, pioneers take all the arrows, visionary in the financial planning world. All right, here comes the mic drop moment. Go. Hmm. The future is going to be dictated by the receivers. As it should have been. 
those of us who get stuff, need stuff, are, are we're going to speak up and ask for it how we want it. We want clear, transparent, and immediate, if possible. Mm -hmm. And sometimes immediate's unreasonable, but there's no reason we can't have clear and the transparent is, you know, we don't want to be screwed or taken advantage of or, you know, treated as anything other than intelligent beings. And being able to be where the humans are is, you know, what we've striven for, with, uh, strove for with, you know, charging for our time. Mm -hmm. And now being able to do like a real time planning engagement, doing virtual planning, we can see people where they're at at the time, you know, where they're at in their heart and their head, but also physically and geographically, so we don't have to be there, but then be able to charge them just for that, you know, exchange, if you will. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it sounds like we've gone back to trans transactional. Um, a better word in my viewpoint might be periodic. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay. that, you know, kind of like you go to the dentist and you pay for services when you sure. go, um, but you don't stop going. <laughs> if you stop going, that Good would be point. a bad thing. Um, so, you know, the bottom line is consumers should be driving um, industries. And I feel that this is where, at least for one aspect of the delivery advice, it's buy time, um, and we're right in the sweet spot of it. So I absolutely believe that's the future. Perfect. I've been, I've been early, but it is, I haven't been changed early, my mind. But you've been right. And the person that's early and right, her name is Cheryl Garrett. And we really appreciate you being on fun with the newies. Hope you join us next time. And I want to thank everybody in all the major podcast platforms and the fun with the YouTube channel for joining us. I'll see you next time.